Okay, so today we're going to look at reading on guitar. We're talking about notes here, not uh, chord shapes or, or um, uh, you know, chords over slashes or anything like that. We're talking about traditional notation and notes. Um, I know a lot of people uh, use uh, tablatures. Uh, I'm going to incorporate it at the beginning so that you know where things are on the guitar. That seems to be the simplest thing. But the goal here is to abandon tablatures altogether. And I'll show you a bit of a structure approach on how to do it. So um, the first thing you want to do is to learn where the natural notes are and not just the name of the notes. We're talking about reading uh, on, on the musical step and the staves, whatever you want to call them. And, uh, um, and basically you, uh, as much as you might not even know the name of the note, there's an extreme example where you might be able to read but not know what note you're reading, which obviously it wouldn't be great for communication. But you would be basically assigning, if, you, if you're tuning to standard, a standard tuning, assigning a note head to a location on the guitar, basically. Because obviously there's a, this E and this E and this E are all called E, but on the, you know, they're a different range. This is a lower E that on the, uh, on the staves has three ledger lines under the stave. This sits in a different place and this sits in a different place. So, <clears throat> Uh, as I said, the the goal here is to learn to read in position and then down a string and then by key. So these are my three variables. So in position means dividing the neck into chunks, into parts like you would do when you learn scales, so to speak, and learn to read in that range, first starting from natural notes, just so all C major or A minor. Uh, then learning to read down a string, each string, and then um, doing a similar approach, but doing going through different keys. So uh, starting with G major only as one one sharp, that uh, or F which only has one flat. So a bit of the time, this is a process. Obviously, you know, this is not something that happens overnight. Like you've not learned to read English or whatever your language is uh, overnight. This is a process. So I'm giving you. Uh, the the idea you know the process and um, I'm giving it also a way to to quiz yourself you know, to test yourself so if you do a little bit a few minutes of this every day I assume that within you know a couple of months to six months to a few years suppose if you want to get to pro level uh, you you will be able to read without any issues this will give you access to all the music from all the instruments it's not just you know tablature only um, unfortunately is is it's just for guitar. So if you might be happy to, 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 to do that at the very beginning, I don't think it will you know, satisfy your need to play, especially if you get into the pro world, the professional world where charts might be made by a piano player or you have to you know, uh, explain things to uh, a cellist or, or whatever. This first part is uh, learning the natural notes down the neck in uh, in position. So the first position is just obviously the first few frets. And as you can see, I've written out the notes and these are the natural notes. I start from low E, which is that note head with the three ledger lines. Then F is the next note on the first fret. G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So now what you want to do is learn, not necessarily memorize these, but quiz yourself. So I'm going to actually put a, an intermediate step, which I usually wouldn't do, and I will not do in the, in the following examples. But I'm going to put some examples here. So you can see that, that first line contains notes <clears throat> contains notes within that range. The range is just from one note to another, you know, let's say that was uh, two and a bit octaves. So the range here is from let's say the lowest the lowest E to the the high G. The low E to the high G. So here you can see I'm gonna go note by note. That's an A and I, I know my location on, on the by, by checking with that, the, the, the note heads with the tablature. That's an A, F, I know the location of that, 
C, third fret, A string, E, and then so on. You keep going. G, C, B, G, D, A, G, E, high E, D, low F. So now you can see that I'm not only learned in the name of the notes, but I'm playing the correct octave. Remember that guitar is a is a uh, uh, it's a transposer instrument, so it transposes an octave from, let's say, the piano. So, so you want to obviously, uh, when you, if you want to check you, your accuracy that you play the correct notes, and you play along to, you know, and you check with the piano, you might be one octave off. So let's go back to our positions. So now I'm going to play the notes in this uh, higher position. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F, natural, G. This is not a scale, remember? This is just natural notes. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Now I'm gonna do this, th go th gonna go through the same process. I'm gonna take another bunch of notes in this, in, within that range, and I'm gonna quiz myself in that area. I'm gonna now remove that intermediate step. I'm just gonna l just learn, try to find the notes. So obviously if you feel still undecided, uh, still uncertain, use that intermediate step, but there will be a point where we'll just, you will just jump straight to just reading the notes. So in this area, G, A, C, F, B, G, D, B, E, D, A, G, middle G, E, G again, and then B. So you can see that I've read just by sticking to that location. I didn't go back to the location that I knew. And again, your goal, your, your idea here is just every day, write a random bunch of notes, uh, you know, buy some stuff paper, or you can do this with a tablet, and just write a bunch of notes. Just quiz yourself in that area, in that range. And the range is obviously, in this case, between that uh, the G and the high E. Okay, let's move up to the next area. So now I have from A to C, my index is on the fifth fret. And so A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Again, these are the natural notes. I did it a bit quicker, obviously, these are for you. All, all this stuff is going to be available on my website, so I'll leave a link in the description for you to say print it out or whatever you want to do, just have a reference. So let's go to the third line, and I have some examples here. Again, C, A, E, B, C again, low. A, high A, E, B, A again, another A, F, C, E. So again, the, the, the timing for now is not important. Obviously, if you want to have, give yourself a bit of a sense of urgency, you can add a metronome and just have, let's say, just, you know, those are all quarter notes and each click, obviously find a BPM that you can, uh, you're comfortable moving at, and maybe challenges you a little bit and then go on, two, three, same line. So you have you have a point of reference also for uh, for the timings of the space. So it gives you a bit of sense of urgency. So let's move to the next area. I'm going to start here from the seventh fret: B, C, D, E, F natural, G, A, B, C, D, E, F natural again. So the range now is from that B to the high D. And again, I'm going to just find a bunch of notes and I'm going to quiz myself on, on this area. So D, E, G, C, F, D, A, F, B, A, E, D, and so on. You get the gist now. And then this is the last area. Obviously, after the 12th fret, everything uh, repeats. 
And usually the way of writing when you are in this range is by putting 8VA. So you will have, you will basically be reading this note, this G, but with the 8VA of the octava will be that G up here. Uh, so usually once you get to these super high notes, because there's a, you know, it, it's difficult to read a note with so many ledger lines, they, they put a note an octave lower with the 8VA. And it would be like reading, just imagine like you're reading in first position, but it's the 12. Imagine there's a kappa there, okay? So that's a little trick there. Let's go back to this last chunk of the guitar. So natural notes, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F. So the range is from that D to this, this I, F, okay? Well, let's try and read something in the area. G, A, B, C, A, E, B again, E again, D, B, A, E, A, F, G, and then D as the last note. Because obviously this is kind of, as they call it, the dusty end. It becomes more difficult. Usually people seem to have a bit of a a hard time reading this area, even though this is where most solos happen, so to speak. When, you know, a guitarist would play, let's say, in this area when they play solo. So when you're reading lead lines on charts, usually this is the area that you want to know relatively well, so to speak. Okay, another, another idea here before we move to playing all of that in different keys is to read the notes. And I'm just going to put these in location, but I'm just read them through, is to read the notes within uh, down a single string. So the first one will be E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. I will let you come up with some, some example of random notes within that range from E to E, and then quiz yourself. You know, just write down a bunch of notes and quiz yourself. And again, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. That's on the A string. If you want to go higher, feel free to do that. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Again, feel free to come up with some exercises. The notes and the natural notes on the G string are G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Then on the B string, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then on the high E, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and E. So again, for each one of these, come up with some examples and start quizzing yourself. So this was all for the natural notes. The next, next bunch of combinations, uh, next bunch of exercises that you should be doing is to start adding um, some alterations. You know, some sharps and flats. Of course, let's say this is my G on the D string. G sharp would be moving down one fret close to the body. And G flat would be close, uh, moving to the headstock. So I'm going to a lower note. Remember that when you're reading, you will bump into things like B sharp in C sharp major. B sharp is a note, okay? Or C flat, okay? So these are all valid where in... in Reality, a lot of people call, let's say, um, C, C, and B is B. You wouldn't say C flat. Where with reading, you you will find these things. You will find E sharps and F, F flats uh, when you're reading in certain keys because it makes more sense to write that way. So uh, again, all you have to do, let's say, if you're reading in G, just add an F sharp to all your examples. I, I would say you don't need to go through any more the you know, the, the location of the notes, but when you, you're doing these kind of quizzes, just add an F sharp either uh, by the clef, so that that means that all the Fs will be sharps with sharp within uh, that that example, or just add a few F sharps just randomly. So you, you're quizzing yourself. Remember that when you add an F sharp within uh, one bar, all the Fs within that uh, that bar will be uh, F sharp. So, and then obviously from the from the following bar, things get uh, neutralized. Neutralized. So, um, so that's the idea. So you will have 
a, a bit of a structured approach on trying to read. And remember that reading is, is consistency. If you don't practice it, you will lose the skill. So try to do this a bit at a time. And let me know if you have any of the tricks in the comment section. Also, if, um, uh, if you want me to make a lesson on reading rhythms, uh, please uh, write that in the comment section. And um, that's pretty much it, really. This is the approach. So remember, in position, uh, learn the notes, the natural notes, the location of the lateral notes, and then quiz yourself. So you will have, let's say, one, two, three, four, five locations. Then downstream, then do the same work, but read uh, within keys. And these are the alteration. I'm going to add all the alteration of all the, the, the 12 keys, so to speak. As always, if you find any value in this video, please consider uh, sharing it online through social media or sending it to somebody uh, that might get some value as well. Check all the links in the description and in the pinned comment. I usually leave some stuff there as well. And uh, if you find value in this, again, visit my website. There's a, there's a shop page where you can get um, a lot of value in terms of you can make a donation and download uh, a lot of uh, uh, instructional material. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.